Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to reading. This week, we're going to be reading Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato. This is an Irish folklore. We're going to read this because this Wednesday is St. Patrick's Day. So this book is, like I said, an Irish folktale, which Ireland is where St. Patrick's Day started. So let's go ahead and get started learning our new vocabulary words before we get started reading our story. So our first word is the word avoid, and that means to keep away. So if I want to avoid the dog, I want to stay away from the dog. So we're going to avoid. Everybody, avoid. Good job. Our next word is pratty, and pratty is a word for potato. Everybody hold your potato. A pratty is a potato. So crept means to move slowly. So I want you to move your snail slowly on your arm. We are, it crept, so to move slowly. Our next word is ponder. And to ponder is to think about something deeply and carefully. So you're thinking. Good job. And then our next word is the word wail. So to make a long, loud cry is to wail. So wail is to cry. And then our last word is the word plenty. It means a large amount of something. So if I say we have plenty of snacks, that means we have a lot of snacks. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into our story. Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato by Tommy DiPaolo. Jamie O'Rourke, his wife Eileen would say, we'll have nothing to eat this winter if you don't go out and dig up the praties. So remember, a praddy is a potato. So she's saying to get up and dig up the potatoes. Oh, the saint preserves us. Jamie would whine, me back so as sore as can be. Sure as I'm telling you, wife, you'll have to dig them up yourself. I'll break in two if I so much as get out of bed. So he doesn't want to go out because he says he's too tired and too sore. So Eileen, who had done all the planting and watering and weeding anyhow, would go out to the tiny garden and dig up the smallest potatoes in Ireland, all because Jamie was too lazy to dig a larger garden and had no money to buy potato seeds. Look how little those, those potatoes or those praties are. Then poor Eileen wrenched her back and was laid up in bed. St. Bridget and the Virgin Mary herself must have smiled on Eileen Rourke, the village woman said. Why, it's the first rest she's had since she married Jamie O'Rourke. With Eileen in bed, Jamie began to worry. No Eileen to dig meant no praties all winter, and no praties meant no food. Oh, poor me, well, Jamie, I'll starve to death. I'd best go to church and confess to Father O'Malley. There's no telling how soon old death will be knocking on me door. So even though it was midnight, Jamie set out for the church. He was about halfway down the hill when he heard singing and a tap, tap, tapping sound. Tap, tap, tap. Sure, and I wouldn't be known, Jamie whispered, but I swear it's a leprechaun. And sure enough, sitting in a circle of ferns in the moonlight was a leprechaun singing and hammering tiny nails into the heels of, of the fairy boots he was making. Jamie knew just what to do. So he saw a leprechaun making shoes. He crept up and grabbed the little man by his coattails and held him firm. Let me go, let me go, the leprechaun shouted. Not on your life, Jamie said. Not until you show me where you keep your pot of gold. So he was trying to get the leprechaun to give him his pot of gold. 
Now everyone in Ireland knows that leprechauns make boots and dancing shoes for the fairies who pay for them with gold. And everyone knows that if you catch a leprechaun, he'll pay for his freedom with his pot of gold. But this leprechaun was clever, more clever than most. Oh, please, Mr. Mortal Man, he pleaded. I'm just starting out making fairy shoes and I only have one or two pieces of gold in my pot. Won't you take a wish instead? Why, what would I wish for, Jamie asked. Me, who's about to die of starvation because my wife is sick and in bed and can't dig out the praties for winter, and they're so puny anyhow. Well, said the leprechaun, reaching into his pocket, you could wish for the biggest pratty in the world. It would last all winter, and you wouldn't have to do anything more than plant the seed, water it, and wait. So he's going to wish for a seed for the biggest pratty. That sounded wonderful to Jamie. Done, he shouted, and he, and as he let the as the leprechaun dropped the seed into Jamie's hand, Jamie let go of his coattails, and off the leprechaun scampered. While Aline heard what he had done, she was fu furious. Jamie O'Rourke, you're not only the laziest man in Ireland, but a fool as well. Giving up a pot of gold for a pratty seed. Well, I'm going to plant this seed and water it, and you'll see, Jamie said. And out he went. And Faith, Eileen did see, in no time the biggest, finest potato plant had sprouted out of the ground, followed by the potato itself. It was so big, it pushed up the only dirt in the garden, but the garden shed and the corner of the cottage as well. Well, surely now it's ready to dig, Jamie said proudly. Look at that giant pratty. He hoed all around it, but he couldn't dig the pratty out of the ground. He got a beam and a rock and tried to pry it out. He pushed and pushed, but it wouldn't budge. As he was pondering what to do, his neighbors passed by on the way to the village. He couldn't believe his eyes. He couldn't wait to tell everyone in the village what he had seen. And before you know it, the hill up to Jamie's was filled with villagers coming to see the big potato. Where did it come from, they asked. Jamie told them about the lucky night he'd had and where he caught the leprechaun and how smart he'd been. Why, anyone could have gotten a pot of gold, he bragged, but the biggest pratty in the world? Well, that took some doing. However, you, however did you outsmart a leprechaun, they all asked at once. Jamie hesitated and scratched his head. Well, we'll help you dig up your pratty, Jamie, if you tell us how you did it and they grabbed shovels and hoes and started digging. They dug and they dug and they pushed and they shoved until the potato flew up out of its hole. It rode down the hill faster and faster until it reached the bottom where it bounced up high and came to a stop wedged between the stone wall and either side of the road. What to do now? Look, the potato is blocking the path. That pratty is so big that no one, no cart, nothing can get by it, the, const the constable complained to Father O'Malley. How's a body going to get in or out of the village? What shall we do, the villagers wailed. They all looked at Jamie and said, it's your pratty. You'll have to move it out of our way. Well, Eileen spoke up, there's more than enough pratty for everyone. Why don't you, uh, why don't you all take some? So the villagers sawed and chopped and carted off a huge piece, huge pieces of potato, while Jamie sat on the stone wall and watched. All winter long, everyone had potatoes to eat, and eat, and eat until no one wanted to see or hear of a potato again. <laughs> in the springtime, Jamie said, "I saved a potato eye for a seed. A, a potato eye for a seed, and it's just about time to plant it." 
Oh no, the villagers all cried. You promise not to plan it, Jamie, and we'll promise before St. Patrick and all the saints that you to see that you and Eileen always have plenty to cook and eat. We don't want another giant pratty around here. Jamie smiled and agreed. What a perfect life for a lazy man. And so you see, Dar darling Eileen, Jamie told her, I wasn't such a fool with that leprechaun after all. And Eileen had to admit that Jamie O'Rourke was right. There's the leprechaun with his pot of gold. So today what I want you to do is we're going to illustrate two of our vocabulary words that we learned. So you're going to illustrate a pratty and plenty of something. Remember, we learned that a pratty is a potato. So we're going to make a potato. Have it some spots like a potato has, just like in the story. And then we want to draw plenty of something. So we know in the story that the leprechaun actually had plenty of gold, right? So he was not being honest. So we can draw plenty of gold. So I've got a big pot here and I'm going to fill it with plenty of gold. So remember, plenty means a lot of. So there's a lot of gold. Good job, guys. Okay, if you have any questions, just let me know. Have a wonderful afternoon, boys and girls. Bye.